Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen, and tonight we're going to talk about COINTELPRO, which is an acronym for the uh, counterintelligence program that was a series of covert and illegal projects that were carried out by the FBI under J. Edgar Hoover from 1956 to about 1971. Now, these were covert operations used against American citizens. Like the people involved in the civil rights movement, including Martin Luther King Jr., as well as black nationalist groups, the American Indian Movement, the Black Panthers, and, and almost every group or organization protesting the Vietnam War. Their tactics were ruthless, to say the least. They included death threats, breaking into people's houses, smear campaigns, psychological warfare. They liked to forge documents, plant false reports in the media. The use of violence was, of course, common, and so was intimidation. False imprisonment, you name it. And yes, these tactics also included assassinations. And perhaps we should title tonight's interview with our guest, That Was Then, This Is Now, COINTELPRO 2012, or COINTELPRO Continues, because these types of operations, well, they've never really ended. They've just uh, assumed different names, and they've expanded to include the multitude of U.S. intelligence agencies. If anything, COINTELPRO is probably worse now than it ever was. And uh, that brings us to our next guest who is here to help us break this all down. Uh, that is Larry Pinckney. And he is a, uh, was a political prisoner and victim of COINTELPRO. He is a veteran of the Black Panther Party, former Minister of Interior of the Republic of Africa, and he authors the Keeping It Real column in the national publication, The Black Commentator. Blackcommentator.com is the website. Larry Pinckney, it's an honor to have you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you, Darren. Right back at you. It's an honor. Believe me, it is an honor to be on the program. And I want to say thank you to all of the viewing and listening audience. Well, uh, for those in our audience who might not be familiar with who you are, uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what you know about COINTELPRO. Well, in the nutshell, uh, my background is that, as you mentioned, I'm a veteran of the Black Panther Party. Uh, I am a former Minister of Interior for the Republic of New Africa. I was a political prisoner for 10 years. I am the only quote-unquote American to have ever successfully self-authored my civil political human rights case to the United Nations. Not that it really mattered to uh, the countries, even though I won the case. Uh, and as you also mentioned, uh, I'm an editorial board member and columnist with uh, Black Commentator, that's blackcommentator.com, and associate editor with Intrepid Report, which is intrepidreport.com. But most importantly, I try to continue keeping it real, uh, to con continue in this struggle, because we're living in some very, very serious times, my brother. Well, I hear you, and, and you were a political prisoner uh, for 10 years after being set up and framed, and, but you're not the only one. I mean, there were literally uh, thousands of others who were victimized about, uh, by this, am I right? You are absolutely correct, and, and I'm so glad you mentioned that, because the reality is, is that there were thousands, more like tens of thousands. Some people are unknown to this day. As you mentioned in your introduction, you know, people were murdered. They were set up in every vicious kind of fashion. Uh, people's families were used against them, their friends, quote unquote, their associates, quote unquote, uh, uh, were used to destroy them based upon what? Their political beliefs, based upon their principles. And, and you also mentioned, and I'm so glad you did, Darren, that this is going on today. The counterintelligence program has, in fact, morphed into things such as the NDAA, the so-called National Defense Authorization Act, which has a provision, as you well know, that says that uh, American citizens, as well as anyone else, but U.S. citizens can be indefinitely imprisoned without charge, without trial without judge, without jury. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Th this Barack Obama war criminal president 
signed the NDAA on December 31st, 2011, when he knew everybody, or mostly everybody, would be sleeping. Nobody would pay attention to it. <laughs> then, of course, we have, what, either sleeping or partying. But then we have, of course, the kill list, Obama's famous, infamous, I should say, kill list, which says that anyone, including U.S. citizens, can be murdered at the will, essentially, of whom? None other than this war, war criminal president, Barack Obama. So what has happened is Cointelpro, instead of destroying it like they should have, they simply made it, quote, legal. And so it's, it's gotten worse. It's in, as you said earlier, the acronyms may have changed, but the reality, the horror of it, continues. And, and this is something that we, all of us, all of us, sisters and brothers, must understand that the situation has intensified. But do not fear, because the power of the people is here, if we can just wake up and organize. But go ahead, my brother. I'm sorry. I ranted. <laughs> no, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, actually, I was wanting to get your uh, take as well on, on something that occurred earlier this week, and that was the fact that Mitt Romney's son was uh, reported to have purchased the electronic voting machines in Ohio. And uh, meanwhile, at the same time, we have Obama supporters who have been flooding Facebook and Twitter accounts saying that they're going to riot should Obama fail to secure a, a second term. And, you know, and I thought this, this had COINTELPRO written all over it as far as let's say that uh, Obama should lose the election. Uh, the powers to be could easily agent provocateur or set up some kind of false flag incident, fan the flames of, of rioting, if you would, and, and throughout any town in USA or throughout the entire nation until ultimately we'd have a massive civil unrest and they would have the perfect excuse to declare martial law and then um, take one more giant leap forward toward the total police state, which has been their objective for, for many, many years. What are the chances of uh, people rioting, you think, if Obama were to lose the election? Well, first of all, I'm sad to say that I, I doubt that Obama will lose the election. I think they, they want to reinstall him because he's what I call perfect ghetto uprising insurance, if you get my drift. Ghetto mm -hmm. uprising insurance. And he's a perfect Trojan horse for this avaricious Wall Street corporate elite. Now, but let's, let me direct my answer to your question. If, in fact, uh, uh, Obama were to lose this election, which I call a C-lection, because we're not really, no one's being elected. It's twiddly D and twiddly dumb. But the, <laughs> the reality is that Barack uh, uh, Obama uh, is in, a, is in a, a position today where the government, and I say corporate government, because it's certainly not the people's government, uh, is utilizing every kind of tactic that it can to frighten people, to, 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 to dis keep people disorganized. And as far as rioting goes, I, I remember saying this, uh, I don't know if it was on this show or another show, but, you know, to riot, if we're going to have a riot, why don't they begin rioting in their own minds, wake their minds up and find out just what the hell is going on? Uh, you hit the nail right on the head, Darren, when you said this has COINTELPRO written all over it. It does. It, it, it's, this is perfect agent provocateur kind of tactics. Sure. Agent provocateur. So we have to be uh, aware of this. The, the corporate stream media is going to do and is doing, not is going to do, is engaging in every uh, uh, nefarious activity that it possibly can to keep people at each other's throats. Instead of people talking about rioting, they ought to be talking about what in the hell do we have this NDAA signing, predator drone, warmongering, Wall Street puppet sitting in the White House doing more damage than George W. Bush ever could have dreamed of doing. And don't get me wrong, I was not a supporter of George W. Bush, but let's get real. OK, this man in less than four years has destroyed in, in, in the essence of, of what 
uh, people who love justice and freedom, he's destroyed the essence, or tried to destroy, I should say, because he hasn't destroyed it, the essence of, of the people's struggle. And I'm talking about black, white, brown, red, and yellow people across the board. None of this division, none of this divisive nonsense. We got to come together. So, no, as far as the, uh, getting back to the whole riot thing, that is what the CIA calls uh, uh, a balloon. They put a balloon up there, floating a balloon, you know what I mean? And then they see what kind of reaction can we get? Can we get a bunch of fools to do this? Oh, wow. Yeah, look at them. <laughs> fools. You know, idiots. But anyway, I'll stop right there. Well, I agree with you, and, and like I said, the potential for civil unrest is there, and, and they could definitely, you know, people in the United States will, will riot if, uh, you know, the Lakers win the championship or, or they're upset about uh, a sporting event, a, a, like, a riot could start easily. Um, you know, another group I was thinking that was targeted by COINTELPRO back in the day was the American Indian Movement. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were all saddened by the loss of American icon, hero, legend, you name it, uh, uh, Russell Means, who tragically uh, passed away over the weekend. And I noticed on blackcommentator.com on the website that you wrote a tribute to Russell Means. It's called A Tribute to Russell Means, Whose Spirit Shall Never Die. I encourage everyone to check that out. It is uh, wonderfully written. And Russell Means was no stranger to the info war. I mean, he's been on our program several times, our very own Rob Dew got to spend the day with him not very long ago, and, and the interview is available on the Alex Jones YouTube channel. In fact, we uh, have a whole uh, Russell Means tribute that uh, we have uploaded on uh, YouTube, so uh, you know everybody should check that out as well. But I, I, you know, tell us about the legacy that he left and, and the message that will continue because of the impact that he had on all of us. Absolutely, to say that I love and respect uh, Russell would be an understatement, truly. Russell Means uh, was not merely, uh, and, and I'm not saying it's certainly not important, but he was not only one of the leaders of the American Indian Movement, but uh, and, and the American Indian Movement, by the way, as you uh, noted, was in fact a target of the counterintelligence program. Proof of that is just look at the many uh, indigenous people that were murdered, and look at a uh, longtime political prisoner who's still a political prisoner, Leonard Peltier, who was also uh, very much and in, directly involved with AIM, the American Indian Movement. Now, getting back to Russell, Russell, I, and as I wrote in my column, you know, in tribute uh, to Russell Means, whose spirit shall never die, and it will not, uh, I, I, I said that Russell represented courage. He, the, the, you know, the corporate stream media did not like uh, Russell Means. And anybody that the corporate stream media uh, liked, you better be wary of. But they did not like Russell Means because Russell Means spoke the truth. Whether we agreed on every single detail or not was absolutely irrelevant. He spoke the truth. He, 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 he continued to talk about how this government is hypocritical, not just to indigenous native peoples. But to everybody, black, white, brown, red, and yellow people, everybody, its policies are hypocritical and dangerous to everyday people. Okay, for example, this whole thing of terrorism. This terrorism is being carried out by whom? Our own government. Well, if you terrorize people, what are those people going to do? They're probably going to respond in kind, or I should say react in kind with what? With terrorism. So it's a cycle of violence and terror that this corporate government is responsible for. And Russell knew that. Russell talked about it, uh, and he tied it in with the many, many trees, treaties that were broken with the uh, sisters and brothers of the indigenous native communities across this land and even in Canada, not just in the United States. Well, that's, that's right. I mean, I mean, he certainly made an impact, and he's going to remain a, a positive influence for, for generations to come. And, uh, man, we, we're certainly going to miss him. Um, yeah. Hey, I, I wanted to switch gears a little bit. I want to talk about the Black Panthers for a little bit because I'm intrigued about it. I, I want to hear about how it was formed and perhaps the role that you played in it. Okay. The Black Panther Party, and, it's, and, and I want to really, again, thank you and everyone at InfoWars and especially the audience. Um, 
because today uh, happens to be a part of, today being October the, the 26th, happens to be a part of what we veterans of the party refer to as Black Panther Party History Month. Why? Because the Black Panther Party was founded in the month of October of 1966 in Oakland, California. Okay? It was founded, first of all, in an effort to combat the virulent uh, police violence against poor people. And in this particular case, it was primarily poor black Americans. But it's poor people across the board. And as I said, the party was founded in Oakland, California in October of 66. The party uh, formed uh, around the basis of what we call all power to the people. That was our rallying cry. All power to the people. The people. And you say black people, white people, brown people, all power to the people, period. Okay? Uh, and if you just put in all power, you Google that, you'll see Black Panther Party come out. We had what was called a 10 point, 10 point, a 10 point uh, program and political platform. Very basic. We don't, you know, we were very simple but deep instead of being like these jerks today, complex and very shallow. We kept it very clear. Uh, the 10 point program dealt with issues of food, shelter, clothing, medical care, everyday issues that we're still having to deal with today. And I don't care what your color or gender is, we still have to deal with them today. And, and the 10 point program consisted of uh, what we want, what we believe, what we believe, what we want. Those are the two segments throughout the 10 point program. And this is why people responded. People responded because it was so clear. It was so simple. And of course, unfortunately, so did the government respond brutally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. J. Edgar Hoover said the Black Panther Party was the greatest threat to the internal security <laughs> of the country, was his quote. That's right. And, <laughs> and you know, now, now talk about insanity. Since when is food, housing, housing shelter, clothing, uh, education, if that's a threat to the internal security of this country, then brothers and sisters, we better look at what internal security really means. <laughs> you know, we better give that some thought. Even today, we better give that some thought. You know, so the 10 point program is what uh, Huey P. Newton, uh, who I was very fortunate to, to, to know fairly well, and Bobby Seale uh, actually sat down and wrote clear, simple fashion. We had Free breakfast programs, yes, free breakfast programs nationally. We had free shoe programs. We had free clothing programs. All of these are national programs, okay? We had free medical programs where we set up clinics. And, and so you don't, you don't have the money to pay? Who cares? Come on. We need you, you. Your medical needs need to be taken care of. And by the way, you didn't have to be black. Yeah, I was going to say that was people of all color. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And that's another thing that the media did was they disfigured and distorted oh, the sure. party. Yeah. Okay. So people, you say Black Panther, they go, oh, they, you know, they, oh, they, they hate those white people, right? But but they've been programmed by the corporate stream media to believe that nonsense, to believe those lies. You know, but the party, as I said, strongly believed in our rallying cry. All power to the people. To this very day, even though the party was ultimately decimated, the legacy of the party, and it was decimated, of course, thanks to uh, the United States government, uh, uh, just horrible act activities that they engaged in. But even though the party was decimated physically, its legacy is incredibly strong even today, which is, of course, why they had to get somebody like you know, Barack Obama to rede redirect the attention from uh, the, the real struggle of everyday ordinary people. So now you got people running around, oh, he black, he black, come by Obama. <laughs> well, you know, the reality is what he is is a murderer. What he is is, 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 is a conjurer. You know, what he is is a Trojan horse. But see, back in the day with the party, with the Black Panther Party, things were far clearer. 
but I have a feeling that things are still going to become even clearer as long as we unite and have our differences. That's fine. If we don't have differences, somebody's lying. But we're going to have our differences in the closet, and we're going to come out as a united front of people of all colors. That's so right. That's right. I, I, I hope I um, answered it. No, absolutely. Uh, no, it's 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 great to hear you speak out. And um, I'm curious as well, what happened to the the old crew? I mean, you guys ever get together? Are there reunions? Do you ever hang out, have a beer, talk politics? All the time, my brother, all the time. I stay in touch with at least three or four party veterans on a regular basis. Uh, Sister Q and Yasha, who's in the Bay Area, uh, you know, San Francisco, Oakland, Bay Area. Uh, brother BJ, Billy X Jennings. Uh, uh, who's also in the Sacramento and California and Oakland area, uh, Brother Gerald, who's also in Oakland. I mean, I can name a whole, Robert King Wilkerson, uh, who was one of the is one of the Angola three, was in prison for my God three decades. Jeez. Finally, was yes, yes, he also was a party member. But I stay in touch. We stay in touch with each other. Oh yes, on a regular basis. Well, I mean this. Part, we go on. The struggle goes on. I was just going to say that, you know, the struggle continues. So it's good to know that you guys are still hanging out. And, um, you know, when I think of the original Black Panther Party, you know, I think of that, the, the street toughness. Uh, you guys had pride, discipline, but you also had, uh, you know, open carry guns, which, uh, you know, you were policing the police, which uh, definitely uh, that needed to be done at that time. It was like a neighborhood uh, watch program, and there was a lot of police brutality going on. And you guys, what, what the, the brothers on the block is what you used to call it and tell us about your thoughts on the, the second amendment i mean we have a right to de uh, defend ourselves don't we, we that's a, i'm glad you put a question mark behind that because uh at least constitutionally we do but if we pay close attention to the way uh things are coming down uh, and i don't care whether it's democrat or republican uh if we pay close attention to what's happening our constitutional rights have been eroded suddenly uh, uh anyone who talks about self-defense is viewed as a quote unquote militant when they should be viewed as a thinking person saying, wait a minute, who runs this country, the people or the government? Well, then they turn around and of course say, well, the people, the government is the people. We all know that's nonsense. The government is, is General Electric. The government, the government is Goldman Sachs. The government is Lockheed. That's not the people. But in any event, my point is that, that, we are the ones who have to make the Constitution and our common sense, not just the U.S. Constitution, but just our common sense. Let's use our common sense. Let's make it real. I write a column in the Black Commentator uh, called Keeping, Keeping It, it real. real, right? So let's keep it real. The reality, and I'm going to mention very quickly, as far as the party was concerned, back in the 60s and early 70s, at the time that the party was openly, and I repeat, openly carrying guns, it was quite legal in the state of California where we're doing that, all right? And uh, uh, so what did they do? They turned around, and <laughs> by they, I mean the government, you know, like, guess what? I, you can probably already tell me what they did. They passed what's called the Mulford, M-U-L-F-O-R-D, the Mulford Act. That's right. And, and, and so they quashed that right. <laughs> Y'all not, no, 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 we, how dare <laughs> You'd be able to do that, you know. But by that time, even though they did that, the 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 we had instilled in the communities, and I say across the nation, uh, with black, brown, red, white, and yellow people, the 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 will to resist, the will to stand up, the will to say no, I'm not going to accept this. So if that's what J. Edgar Hoover meant when he said we were the greatest threat to internal security. If that's what he meant, he might have had a point. <laughs> well, I think what's uh, frustrating with me uh, and, uh, and a lot of people that work here at InfoWars, I'm sure with yourself as well, we all have uh, friends, family members, uh, neighbors, uh, who, uh, you know, they're stuck in that left-right paradigm, if you will, and which, as far as I'm concerned, the two-party system it's a two-party dictatorship you know right and and how do we get people to break that matrix and get them to wake it up what's that's the best way that you've learned to get them to uh, wake up from this uh, trance-like state and wake up to the realization that the world is not what they think it is well i like to make people mad because sometimes that's like you know what brother sometimes that's the only way you can make them think 
I don't mind if they get mad at me, but if they get mad at me, what that really think, what that tells me is somehow something that I said must have actually gotten into that little brain and they were thinking about it and they didn't like it. All right. <laughs> uh, but that tells me they were at least thinking about it. We had, all these couch potatoes that we have, all these sheeple, not people that we have, we have to regain. I, I write this all the time in IntrepidReport.com and BlackCommentator.com. I say it all the time. We have got to regain our humanity. You are so correct. You know, Darren, you are so correct. The, the, this, this false, fake, fraudulent left-right paradigm is nothing but a trap. It's a trap, particularly as embodied by the Democrat and Republican Party. It's like, please. Wake up, people. This is the same game. They play the same game. So people feel trapped, and they are trapped, because we have allowed ourselves to be trapped. The one thing they do not want, and by they, I mean the corporate stream media and the corporate stream government, the 1% or a little bit that runs this, this, this nation, the one thing they do not want us to do my brother, if they do not want us to get together face to face and communicate, because Lord knows if we do that, why well, we might actually change some things. You know, share our experiences, share what we have gone through. My pain is your pain, and your pain is my pain. Now, this liberal left and, and right wing nonsense, we need to put that aside. No, it's di divide and conquer, and that's that's yes. their intent is to divide and conquer. And, uh, you know, the, the sooner people realize that, the better, because our nation is in dire straits, man. I mean, we, we've got to come to the realization that a, go, a, a global corporate elite are basically running the show. They could give a rat's ass who wins the election because uh, either, either way they win. That's right. And that's what people need to understand. I, uh, people say to me, well, you're not going to vote for Obama? And I said, well, vote for who? You don't know who Obama is? And I look at them and just shake my head and say, you know what, brother, you know what, sister? Apparently, you must, un you must not understand the power of the people. These people, brother, whether it's Mitt Romney, Barack Obama, or Howdy Doody. In fact, I, let me give Howdy Doody more credit because he probably does represent the people more than these. Oh, these, these. Sure he does, yeah. You know, but, but <laughs> you, you know, we used to say back in the day, what if they gave a war and nobody came? What if they gave a selection, and I call it a selection because it's not an election. What if they gave a so-called election and nobody came? You know, uh, who was it? Albert Camus, the French philosopher, said, what better way to enslave a man than to give him the vote and tell him he's free? Well, you don't control who gets there. You don't control, when I say there, who the candidates are actually going to be. Why, you don't even see third parties allowed, third parties, plural, allowed in the national debate. I mean, what's, what's that about? And by the way, what about the electoral college system that is like a safety net for this corrupt system? What about that? Excuse me, whatever happened to one person, one vote? Whatever happened to that? So we need to be honest with ourselves. It's not overwhelming. It's actually quite simple. If we band together, if we collectively come together and, and do something about it as a people, and guess what, brothers and sisters? They are going to do everything they can, including agent provocateurs, people to try to set us up, to try to frame us, people to try to kill us. Hey, that's what a government does that fears the people, that it's time for the people to stop fearing the government. It is time for the people to start taking serious action to come together with each other to for our common interest. We have far more in common, black, white, brown, red, and yellow, than we, ha than we have in terms of dissimilarities. Our common interest is what this struggle is all about. Well, I'm into that. And, um, you know, you're a terrific speaker. Do, do you have, do you go to any speaking engagements? Uh, you know, we're almost out of time. So I also wanted to ask you if you have anything uh, coming up on your website, speaking engagements, what's next for Larry Pinckney? Larry, Larry takes it as it comes. The, the, the most recent actual speaking engagement that I had, excuse me, was uh, at Syracuse University, which was a few months ago last year, uh, College of Law. And, and uh, we shall see. I certainly will be looking forward to be speaking more with my sisters and brothers of all colors, you dig, and as, as we say in the party, you dig, you understand, because this struggle is all of us together. So 
go to Black Activist Writers Guild. That's blackactivistwg.org. Check us out. Check out the articles. You'll, you'll see various pages, and you'll see what I'm up to. But you know what? What I'm up to is what all of us have got to be up to. I'm not in this struggle by myself. I'm in it with you, Darren. I'm in it with our listeners at InfoWars. I'm in it with everybody across the board. Well, that's right, and we are all in this fight together, and, and Larry, I can't thank you enough for hanging out with us tonight. I admire your courage. Thank you for uh, having the courage to stand up to COINTELPRO and, and warning others that, that it's still happening today, and you know, we all need to recognize that as well. So uh, I, I sure hope you are willing to come back and join us again sometime in the near future. Of course, and I thank you, and let me simply say thank you to all my sisters and brothers, all my brothers and sisters out there. All power to the people. All power to the people. All right, Larry, thank you. All right, folks, there he goes. That was Larry Pinkney, and, and you know, he's quickly becoming a uh, favorite guest on our show. Our viewers respond well to him, and, uh, you know, he's a fascinating character. Uh, you know, he's the real deal. Um, you know, it's, it's always fascinating to, to talk to him because not only did he take part in one of the most interesting times in history, you know, with the Black Panthers back in the 60s and 70s, but he's a prominent activist today, and who knows, perhaps the, uh, you know, modern times will prove to be the most interesting time of all, uh, if not especially uh, dangerous for political activists. Hey, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. I'm Darren McBreen. The InfoWars Nightly News will continue, Lord willing, next Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Until then, I hope all you guys out there have a blessed weekend, and we'll see you back right here on Monday. Good night.